Welcome to our training tutorial, taking a look here at working with our mainline chassis dyno. Now the goal of this tutorial is to go through all of the really features and functions that are the most important working with the mainline dyno. The mainline can do a lot more than what I'm illustrating and showing here in the tutorial, but this is the essentials in order to get the vehicle up and running on the mainline and start to operate and do your tuning process. At the end of the day, the only thing I care about is being able to calibrate and tune with the vehicle and the dyno that I'm working with. I want to do that as efficiently as possible. So I'm going to go through just setting this up and working with the software, how I do things day to day here on the main line, uh, so that you're able to get through calibrating and tuning a car on a main line as efficient as possible. Again, the dyno can do a ton of different data analysis and features. I just simply don't use them because I'm interfacing with the EMS system, I'm calibrating, I just need the dyno to do very specific things. So holding the engine at various different RPM points, allowing me to sweep part throttle, doing the calibrating for fuel and spark timing, and then being able to make full throttle pulls and being able to compare run to run on the dyno as I make changes to the fuel, spark timing, variable cam, boost control. So those are the essential things when we're calibrating. Let's jump in here and take a look at the mainline dyno so we can start to take a look at what we're working with here in the software and what to expect as we're calibrating and setting up our vehicle on the mainline. So first things first, we can see I have the mainline software open on my screen right here. We can see this is the main interface when you open up the software. We can actually take this a step back. If I go here to file and exit, let's go ahead and just exit out of the software here so we can see what it looks like just opening up the software from the beginning. So this would be if you just purchased your mainline, you fired the dyno up, you're ready to use it, but you're sitting there asking yourself, how do I actually start to work with this? So first thing we're gonna do is look for an icon on the desktop that's gonna be dyno log. So we're gonna double click on this right here, give that a second, the software is gonna open up automatically on the screen here. So we'll just give this a second. It does take about 10, 20 seconds for it to actually open up and begin and be ready to use. So we can see right now it is open and it's ready to start using. Now, first thing I wanna talk about here is what we have laying out on screen. So we can see over here, this is the main tack. This is gonna allow you to control the speed you're operating your engine at in a part throttle situation. So this is not what I would use for doing any full throttle tuning, although you could go full throttle while you're in this main run screen. This is primarily used for part throttle tuning. I'm gonna demonstrate that with our demo vehicle here on the main line in a little bit. But one thing to note, working with the keypad I have here for the mainline dyno. If I use my plus or my minus key, we can see my yellow tack needle moves up and down. We can see if we look at this little window right here, this is showing the hub speed that we want to control the dyno at. This over here in the yellow, that's going to be our actual taco where the engine RPM we want to control the engine at. So we have to enter in a gear ratio so that the mainline understands when we're in a particular gear and it sees a particular hub speed, how can translate that into an engine speed? Ultimately, what we want to work with interface here with the mainline dyno is going to be over here in our tack. So if we're doing, again, part throttle tuning, this is going to be where we operate. And we move this up or down. We move this yellow tack sweep needle up or down using our plus or minus button. And again, I'm going to demonstrate that in a little bit. Now, also on the screen here, we find that we have this torque reading. And this is going to give you the actual torque reading coming out of the engine. So we can see right now, there's a little bit of an offset, about 6.1, 6 6.2 pound-feet of torque. Um, I could zero this out. I'm just going to leave it right there. It's not super important, but it's going to give you that live torque output. That's extremely useful if you're doing spark timing tuning in part throttle, looking at the live torque output to be able to determine maximum brake torque while you're doing your calibration process. Going down here below, this is our power output out of the engine, so we have both torque and horsepower live that we can actually see in our display menus down here. Now also in our main interface screen here, we have a vehicle fan option. Now I opted when I purchased my mainline all-wheel drive hub, pro hub dyno, I purchased the fan option, which is an excellent fan. It's a three-phase fan. It's definitely a little bit loud, but it cools down the engine very, very well. I can run the engine pretty hard on the chassis dyno here without worrying about it overheating. Um, it still can overheat if I run it too hard, but this is substantially better than any fan I've ever worked with. When I had my Dynapack dyno for the last 20 years, um, I had a, huge, a couple different fans over the years, um, and, and this is by far superior to any of them. So this is an option that you can start to work with here. I can either click on it. There's the fan. You can hear how loud that is. This allows me to just automatically turn this fan on and off when I'd like without having to get out of the car. That's extremely useful for tuning. Now, 
I can, instead of clicking on my vehicle fan option here, I can also hit my V button on my keypad here, and that's gonna allow me to do the same thing. You can see that turning on off the fan. So I have this remote functionality right from my keypad. I can either access it from the screen here or with any other screens within the dyno, I can click V, which allows me to turn that fan on. So it's an option. If you've purchased the additional fan with the main line, I highly recommend it if you haven't purchased it already or if you're thinking about purchasing a main line, definitely look into the fan. It's a little bit pricey, but definitely worth it. We also have down here the air fuel heater. If I'm using the built-in wideband, which I don't do because I'm always running a wideband into the EMS system I'm calibrating, but if I want to go in and work with the dyno wideband, I would click on the air fuel heater and this would send the output to control the heater circuit to turn on the wideband heater. Uh, for the dyno. So I, I don't work with this option again. That's just something that you uh, could go ahead and turn on and off. We'll just leave that off for right now. There's a pause display option. This pauses the display from displaying anything. I don't find that super fun or super useful or functional, so I don't ever turn that on or off. There's a reset max. This is going to be resetting any of our maximum torque output. So we can see the power, the torque, and the RPM. This shows you the peak values as the engine is running. So you can actually go here and reset it. Um, if I go ahead and reset it, it's gonna, again, we can see it resets that torque right there. Um, something that you may or may not wanna use, that's really up to you. Now, the next thing we need to look at here on the screen, this is going to be if the vehicle's rear wheel, front wheel, or all wheel drive. Now, if you're dealing with a just a uh, Pro Hub dyno that's gonna be just two wheel drive, you would either designate it as front or rear. In my case, with the all wheel drive, I can either, it can designate it as all wheel drive. So in order to make sure we tell it the correct drive the vehicle we're putting on the chassis dyno is going to have, if we right click here, we can go into a different screen and we can find here the dyno control mode. And I believe this is gonna be specific for the, the all wheel drive pro hub. So uh, we have rear wheel drive, we have front wheel drive, we have all wheel drive. So in this case, I am front wheel drive and I need to select this option. If I simply click OK here, it's gonna go and switch it down here below to front wheel drive. You can see that's gonna be changed. Now, if you put the vehicle on an all wheel drive hub, and let's just say it's set for rear wheel, and it sees that the fronts are going to be moving, so you say you start to drive it and you just forget to change it down here, um, it's not going to lock up or do anything crazy. It's just gonna warn you on the screen that there's a configuration problem. It realizes that, let's say the front hubs are spinning when you're telling it to expect the movement on the back hubs for an all wheel drive hub dyno. So in this case, we just select front wheel drive. Now, there's another consideration here we have to make sure, and I got tripped up on this when I started to use the dyno. There's an option here, common rear or common front. Now, this vehicle I'm working with here, this is a Honda EP3, I have a K24 engine swap, a six-speed transmission with a limited slip differential. The two hubs, so my two output hubs, or uh, the axle outputs, I should say, from the transmission, they're not directly linked together. Now, because I have that limited slip differential, it will try to go in and equal the output out of the transmission, but it is not a spool or a solid differential. So in the situation where you have an open differential or even a limited slip differential, whether you're front or rear wheel drive, you would select here, or I should say not select, common rear or common front. If you have a spool in your differential, in your transmission, so instead of having a limited slip differential or an open differential, you had a spool or a solid differential, you would have to choose common rear or common front depending if you're front or rear wheel drive. So super important that you set it as such, depending on if you have a spool in your differential or not. If you are open differential or limited slip differential and you have this clicked, you get all kinds of weird control problems. I know because I had it selected and it spent a bit of time trying to figure out what was going on, finally determined that that was the setting there. So again, if you have a spool and your rear or front, select which one you have here, open differential, limited slip differential, do not select it. So I'm gonna click okay here. And now the main setup screen here is set up and still not ready to go. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.